Hi, I'm Julia Noyes, Noyes like Joyful Noyes, and I'm your instructor for the watercolor class. So what we're going to do in this session, we're going to do lesson number one. So there are going to be seven lessons, seven different paintings. Don't worry about a thing. This class is going to be fun. Relax. Take a breath. Don't stress at all about this. Honestly, this should be great. This should be the time of your life. So have fun. Well, first of all, I do want you to know my text number. So you can text me. It's very simple, 402-615-2789. Now tell me who you are, because I do teach other classes. So simply identify yourself, your name, and what class you're taking. So first of all, you will find also online the syllabus. So you can check this out yourself. You can read the syllabus. It has the details of this class, which I'm not going to read to you, because you can read that. But the first question I always have is, well, what are we going to do in this class? So we're going to be doing seven paintings. We're going to do leaves, water, cityscape, sun and shade, still life, glass. And the last one is free choice, the painting of your choice using certain techniques. So for each completed painting, handed in on time, you have a possibility of getting 10 points. So seven paintings times the potential of 10 points, that's 70 points. So another 10 points would be doing a presentation on an artist. It will be quite simple, and we'll talk about that later. Don't worry about it. It's short and sweet. It's not intense. It's not difficult. It's fun. So that's a potential 20 points. So now we're already up to 90 points. The last 10 points is either being part of a gallery show or doing a short little video of yourself with your work talking about your paintings. So it can be a five minute video. For this class, I highly recommend this book. We are going to be referencing this book throughout the class. It will give you more explanations and more details. So if you can afford to get this book, I highly recommend it. It has a lot of examples and techniques, and it's full of pictures, so it's really fun to look at and to read. You can get this book uh, at our local union store, or you could get it online. Of course, you're going to need some watercolors, but you don't have to spend a fortune. And watercolors really never go to waste because they're water soluble. If they dry in your pellet, you can just simply re-wet them and use them over and over. So it's not like acrylic, it's not like oil paint. Watercolors are water soluble. So you can buy kits like this. And I noticed one of my watercolors is dry as a bone. So I might have to rip this tube open to get out the watercolor. Don't throw it away. You can still use it. Often when you buy a tube of paint like this, it's never been used before, it has this little silver metal uh, cover on it after you take off the lid. You think, oh, how do I get that off? You simply turn the lid around. The lid has a little piercer. You turn it around and you put the lid back on. You have to force it on. I can hear it pop. So now I can get the paint out. So depending on what type of paint you buy, you might have to open it up like this. I find these palettes very helpful. So this is what we call a palette. You can buy all different kinds. You could even use a styrofoam plate. Paper plate doesn't work very good because the water just absorbs and goes through the paper. Here's a pellet that's been used before, and this paint is dried up. Don't throw it away, remember? So I can simply re-wet this, add some water to it, and I'm going to, in five or 10 minutes, I can use this paint again. So it's, do you, can you see? It's already starting to dissolve. So I'm able to use this. Now you'll know you, if you have some other kind of paint that's not watercolor, like for example acrylic, and it doesn't 
dissolve, you'll know it's not watercolor. So don't throw any of your paints away. You can reuse it. And even if your paints have dried like this, it's not a problem. Keep that. Now, if you get everything where it's looking kind of muddy and black, you might want to wipe off an area with a sponge or, or wet rag. You can do that, but just think about you can always reuse this paint. When you're setting up your palette, there's lots of ways you might think about doing this. You could put the light colors on one area, the dark colors on another area. You could set it up like a color wheel. Everybody seems to have a different approach of what they like. So to start with, maybe you don't want to put all your colors out because they do dry. So you could just start to use colors that you know you want maybe for this first assignment. So here's some blue. It's quite intense. And this is a Van Gogh brand. There's lots of different brands. I do like this brand. It has a lot of color in it. And it will say the different colors. Uh, like this is burnt sienna. So because our first assignment is about leaves, I'm going to be thinking, what colors do I want to use? And I'm going to show you some techniques. So before you even start your painting, you'll have some techniques that will help you to develop your idea. So don't worry. I love to have several containers of water. You need at least two, one for cleaning your brush and one to have clean water so when you're starting you have some nice clean water to work with. If all your water is dirty and you keep dipping into dirty water, it's also going to make your painting dirty. So have clean water. Now this one, I actually put some watercolor in to the paint, into the water. So I put paint into here because I wanted to have a lot of this blue already mixed up and ready to go. So it's pretty intense color and I'm not going to throw this away. I can just keep adding water to it. So if I want, if I know I'm going to have a color that I'm going to use quite a bit, I might mix it up ahead of time like this in a little jar. So you'll decide what works for you the best. There's not a right or wrong way. There is not one way of doing painting. You know, that's the neat thing about this class. There's many ways of doing something. So have a blast. Now I do want to tell you about some other colors uh, that you can buy. So these are not in the tube. They do come in little cakes and they also come in concentration like this. So this is actually comes in a little dropper like this and I'll put some here. So these are very intense colors. So watercolor also comes in a stick. So it comes in all kinds of forms depending on what you like. You might try them. But let's start with the, some of the tube watercolors. That's going to be the easiest. As for brushes, don't go out and spend a lot of money on brushes. I have a watercolor brush that costs $140. I rarely use it because it's so precious, it's so wonderful, but it's not any better than any of my cheap brushes. So don't be lured into buying the most expensive brush because it's all about using it and getting acquainted with your brushes is what makes the most difference. This brush is a flat. See how this is flat across here? So this is called a flat and it's good for making flat shapes, square shapes, flat shapes. And I'll be showing you more of this, but that's easy to remember. It's a flat. So I can use it this way. I can use it this way. I can twist around. I'm going to show you here on my watercolor paper what I mean, how you can make different strokes with the flat. So I can make flat like this. Uh, so I'm using the broad side of my brush. I can use it like this to get thin edges. I can twist it, getting thin, thick, thin, thick. And this flat brush holds quite a bit of paint. So you can buy flats in various sizes, uh, one inch, two inch, three inch. Here I'm putting blue and green paint together in my brush. And so I start to get these really fun colors that are variation of color. So these are examples of using flats. And this, guess what? It's called a round. 
because it's a round shape. So the round shapes create an, a round or tip or point on the edge, on the beginning of our stroke. I have to dip in and get a little more paint because my brush was really dry. So here you can see the edge is round for the round brush, flat for the flat brush. Now for the round brush, need more paint, this brush is really dry, I can twirl it, I can swirl it, I can use it and make little tips, little edges, I can go up and down and make dots. So this is the fun part of getting acquainted with your materials, is actually taking time to just have fun with them and see what you can make your paint do, what you can make your brush do, and just simply it's like doodling. And of course, littler brushes make littler strokes. So this one is little, but I can press it down and, and get a bigger shape. This is almost a flat tip when I pressed it down. So when you know what your brush will do, you're going to be happier because you're going to be able to control your brush to do what you want it to do. The biggest thing I learned, and I started doing watercolors many, many, many years ago, is the amount of water you have in your brush determines your control. So if you have a lot of water in your brush, you're going to get looser, more free strokes, which is great if that's what you want. But if you want strokes that are going to be very defined and controlled, then use less water and more paint and you will be able to control those edges. So now I'm going to clean this brush up, so I'm going to clean it in my one container that I'm calling my dirty water. And so most of the paint is now out of that brush. I just want to show you something how I can blend out an edge. Well, as long as that watercolor is still wet, I can make it fade out and blend out. Now here the watercolor is already drying, but because we know this is water soluble, I can keep working this and soften that edge. So you can see the edge is already starting to soften even though that watercolor was really dry. So every, anywhere where uh, the watercolor is still wet, it's pretty easy to blend out, make it fade out. So you can have crisp edges, you can have softer edges. And if I really don't like that line, I might add some more paint here on top of that edge to make it look like it's blended out more. This is the fun thing you'll learn when you're doodling and playing with your watercolors. Okay, you are probably wondering, okay, what is the paper or the surface that you should use? There's lots of different kinds of paper, and often they come in little watercolor blocks like this. I love this size because this is the size I take when I'm traveling. It's only seven by 10 inches. And so it's great outside because I can, yours will be, of course, glued. This black is glue around here. So you'll have to use an edge of your fingernail or a little knife or whatever to loosen the top edge. But I'm not going to do that right now because I want this to all be stuck together so it's not going to warp, it's not going to buckle. So don't, don't separate this until the end of your painting. Because if it's all buckled, you're going to get frustrated and it's like, oh, this is all wrinkly and bubble, <laughs> wrinkled and uh, I don't want that. So this way it's going to be nice and secure. So you can get these different sizes. This is a great size. It comes in 20 sheets. This is going to be plenty for the class because we're doing seven watercolors as hand-in assignments. And then you'd have several sheets for experimenting on, trying the techniques, having fun doing additional watercolors. So this watercolor, when it says 140 pound, that's a good weight of watercolor. It's not too light, it's not too thin, and it's not really heavy. So when we use really light paper like this, this is very difficult to work on because the water color absorbs so quickly into it, it buckles. I mean, this will buckle 
within the first five minutes because it's so thin and absorbent. So this is only okay if you're just experimenting and having fun or doing some sample sheets and you don't want to use, use up your good watercolor paper. You know, so this is drawing paper and it's okay to experiment with. So this is a larger sheet of paper and this is 140 pound, it's nice and thick. It doesn't buckle very easily. Great to work on. You can use both sides. So don't think about, you can only use one size, side of your paper. You can use both sides. So it gives you more leeway. And there's paper that's even 300 and 500 pound. That's very expensive. Some of it is 15 to $20 a sheet. So hold off on using that paper at this stage. Keep with a tablet of paper where it's pretty economical and you feel like you can use a lot of it. So we've gone through the materials, the paint, the brushes, the palette, and the paper. So next, what we're going to be doing, we're going to do the techniques for this assignment. So you will have a little sheet like this and you can get this online or when you come to class, you can get this. Some of you might want to already start having fun with this. So there's six techniques that we're going to use in the first painting. So I want you to learn the techniques, and as you're learning these, you can start to think how you might use these. Now, the number one is doing a flat wash. And so this is done just with a brush and I'll show you some students' work. So here's a flat. This is what it looks like flat. Here's a really good flat one. So this is just for a flat area. So this is a flat. Look how it looks pretty even. This is pretty even. Here there's getting a little more variation in uh, the whole area. This is the most difficult technique of the whole semester because it seems like it should be pretty simple to do a big area that looks the same but you have to have enough water and you have to work really fast to do this. So all the other techniques after this are easier. So I think this is worth practicing. So what you'll do on your watercolor paper, you can practice and then you can also practice on this. So to do this flat area of one color, well, I, my brush still has paint in it, we're trying to get this whole area the same. And I'm going to put a little surface under this so you can see this a little better. I like to tilt my board. So I'm working uh, in reverse so you can see this. So I have a lot of paint and a lot of water in my brush. So if I don't have enough water, it's gonna be really streaked. I'm gonna start here, and I have to work really fast, 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 really fast. And then I'm gonna stop. So, I mean, this paper is really thin and absorbent. It's the hardest, like I was saying, to work with is when you have something very thin. But that's the essence of this idea. And I'm going to put something under this so it can dry and so it's, you know, falling into the next uh, brush stroke I did. So really fast. Don't make it harder than that. Give it your best shot one time. It's kind of like playing golf. Every stroke counts. Don't do 20 strokes when you can do it in three. So this is what we call a flat area. The next one, we're going to be doing the same thing, but it's a variation or sometimes in your book it will be called a gradation. So in your book, pages 32 to 40 will cover these techniques and then there's a little bit more on page 108 and that will be on your little instruction sheet. You'll be able to see that. So our goal is to get an area that's really flat like this. Look how beautiful that is. But there's a little blurb there don't worry, it's okay. That's part of making it look handmade, one of a kind, done by a real person, not a machine, not printed on a photocopier. 
So this is what we're going for, it's really a flat. So the next area is a gradation. And so when we're doing gradations, we're doing an area that goes from either one color to another color or from dark to light. So it's very similar to what we just did, but we are going to do a gradation and this time I'm going to use a little less water. So you're going to want to have a sponge or a rag nearby so if your brush you can see how much paint and water uh, is actually in your brush. So if it's dripping it's going to be too much. But for this I'm going to keep, and I don't care if I go out my, outside of this little border here because these are so small, but I'm going to start with a lot of color and then I'm going to keep dipping into my water to make it lighter. So here we go. Okay, I think this needs a little bit. Okay, there we go. I'm talking so it starts to dry out. Okay, here we go. Okay, that's good. Now more water and less paint. We'll see if we can get this lighter. I'm tapping the water out, the paint out, and putting uh, some more water in to get it lighter, lighter, lighter. So here I stopped a little bit short, but do you get the idea? It goes from dark to light. But this one, when I'm letting it dry, I'm gonna turn it so if there's more pigment left on my little piece of paper, it's gonna run down here, so this is gonna make this darker and this is lighter. So this is called uh, variation or, I mean, you'll see different words like gradation in the book. So this is what we're going for. From dark to light or from one color to another color. So these we call gradations or variations. It makes sense. Here's some other examples of doing it on our little paper. So our next one is called color mixing. And color mixing is just what it sounds like. We're gonna actually mix colors on our piece of paper. So instead of mixing them on a palette, or on a paper plate, we're actually mixing our colors as we go along. So here I have this pinkish red, and here I have a dark blue. I put those two on, and I start it to mix across, and it creates, of course, a purple. So I don't have to use a purple paint. I can, on my paper, I can mix those two colors together already and get a mixture. So, for example, since I have these colors out, I have some blue and I have some green already out, so I'm gonna mix those two colors. So if I have green here and I have blue here and I start to mix those two colors together, what color am I gonna get? Blue, green. So here we go, I'm gonna start with quite a bit of color, so here's my green. And I'm tapping my brush off because I don't want it totally running all over the place. And here's my blue. So now I'm going to start to mix those. I have quite a bit of blue in my brush. I need a little more green. So I'm going to start to overlap those colors. And I start to get this blue-green. It shows up really well right here. So that's the idea for color mixing. Don't keep going over and over this paper because this paper tears very easily. You know, it's just photocolor, uh, photocopying paper, so it, it doesn't last very long. And it's just to, for you to get this idea. Once you have done this sample sheet, then I think you're ready to do it on some paper. And just have fun and doodle around with it. So here's another example of color mixing where I had this red orange and this yellow green, and I I'm letting them run together, and I'm getting this in-between color, which is quite beautiful. Our next technique is called glazing, and I love glazing. I use it all the time. With glazing, we're using two different colors. For example, this was color number one I put down, which is this yellow-green. And I let that dry, important to let it dry, 
And then once it's dried, I'm going over with another color, and so I'm creating these in-between colors. Going over it, letting that color still show through, going over it with this color, still letting that color show through. So this is what we call overlays or glazing. And you will see this in your book on page 40. So what we do with that to start with is we'll put a color down and we're gonna let it dry. So I'm gonna let put this color down and we're gonna come back to that. So it's kind of a light orange. And after that's dried, then we'll overlay or glaze over it with some other colors. Our next technique is uh, a leaf print with shadows. I bet that you have done leaf prints before. So you simply find some leaves and with the leaf you can paint on one side of the leaf and while it's still wet you're going to print it. So you want to work really fast because once the watercolor is dried it's not going to print off. So I like to find leaves that have a lot of veins that are going to create some texture and then I want to put enough paint on really fast that I'm going to be able to print that. So you can have fun with leaves. You can cut them apart. You can use part of the leaf. But because this painting is going to be about the using of leaves, you might gather several different leaves, big ones, little ones, a variety of different shapes, teeny ones that you can use over and over, big ones, don't forget, of course, when a leaf gets dry and brittle, it's a little harder to use. So when you go get your leaves, try to use them fairly soon. These leaves are old and they're getting brittle. I can still use them to some extent. So with this, I want to create the look of a leaf that is turned or there's going to be a shadow. I, want, I don't want just a flat leaf. It's like when we put a shadow on like a container like this, it just adds more volume and more design to it. So I don't want to just do only flat leaves. So here on page 108, you will see more about leaf prints. But I love how some of these are really dry, some of them are wet, where I've added more water, some I actually go back in and add more design to them. So this takes a little practice. If you don't like it the first time, let it dry and you can print right over the same spot, the same area. So I'm gonna pick out a leaf or part of a leaf. Here's one actually that I printed over a couple different times. So this one, is it was really starting to dry out so that's why there's some of these white areas showing. And I like it. So each one will be very different. This one, there isn't hardly any white showing, so it's more runny. The veins really don't show that much, but I'm going back in with a brush and adding more leaf lines. So there's not a right or wrong. Everyone will be slightly different. Okay, so I think I'll just use this leaf oops, that I have right here. It's a partial leaf, and for this I want to put quite a bit of paint on it. So this paint has a lot of pigment. Oops, not that much. When I brushed it on the leaf, it doesn't look like it has that much. So I'm going to actually add more paint to this. I could even put it right on the leaf. I want some areas to really stand out. Some can be more uh, faded and soft, but I want some areas to be quite obvious. Okay, now I, I know by just looking at this, it's pretty wet, so I think it's gonna run together. So I could even try this out on something else And sometimes the second printing is even better than the first. So I'm pressing it around, I'm doing the vein side down on the leaf and I'm gonna pick it up. 
Huh, well, interesting. It didn't really pick up all that. It just picked up a little bit. I mean, this is pretty dark. So it's okay. It's not really what I expected. And one thing I realized I needed to get more on the edge if I want this to show up more of the shape. I'm gonna get a little more blue here. Okay, I'm gonna lay this flat and see what I can come up this time. We'll see if this is better. Oh, I do like it better because more of the veins are showing here. And right now, while this is still wet, I think I'm gonna go in and make this look more like the edge of the leaf. Because this is a broken leaf, maybe I want to have more of this corner or this edge of the leaf showing. And because this is water soluble, I can still go in while this is still wet and create more changes in the leaf. I don't mind that this is dark here. I actually like the contrast. I like that these leaves, uh, this vein and this part of the leaf shows. This is different. It's not all the same. So you see what you like. So that's for the leaf shape. So with the leaf shape in mind, I do want to show you how I developed my painting, and so you will be doing this. So here was my little thumbnail sketch, and you'll be doing this. This is part of your assignment. So you could be inspired by looking at nature, go outside. You could take some photos, something with one leaf, with many leaves, a tree, a whole tree, one leaf. However you want to develop this is fine but you are going to develop a little thumbnail sketch. That's what we call this. It's a, a little miniature sketch. And you're gonna be required in your final painting to use all the techniques we're talking about today. So the six techniques that you're learning, you will incorporate. So here's the six little techniques, the flat, the variegation or uh, gradation, color mixing, glazing, wet into wet I'm gonna show you next, and the shadows. So from that, this is the painting I came up with. So you can see I'm using lots of leaves for this painting. And one of the requirements is to have your design go off three edges. And what I mean by that, see how this leaf actually goes off this edge, this actually goes off this edge, this actually goes off that edge, because I don't want just one leaf in the middle of a big piece of paper. It doesn't look like a composition. So think about how you are going to get your painting to go off three edges. So it forces you to fill up the page. So you can see some of my leaf shapes. Here's a, a print that we just did. Some of them I'm actually painting in the leaf. So it can be a variety. It, it's not going to be just all leaf prints when you do this. It will be a variety. So that's how you can start to visualize how you might do your painting. Okay, the last technique is wet into wet. And this is probably one of my favorite techniques because it's so much fun. And so what we do, we drop colors down and put you know, several colors down and then we drop some colors inside that color and we drop some colors next to it and we drop some more colors into this, and we let the paint run. It's a very uncontrolled, fun technique. Wet into wet simply means you're putting wet color into wet color, and I'm not really trying to control this. I'm letting you know it kind of flow together, and if I pick this up too soon, all of this will run together, and I won't be able to see any separate colors, so we want to be able to see some separate colors, but we certainly don't want polka dots. So you have to do this while it's still wet, so things can run together. I can leave some whites showing of the paper, that's fine. I can always go in and add more, 
But so it's just kind of like dropping color or wet into wet. And every one you do will look different because this is a really free uh, flowing type of technique. So we're gonna let that dry. And so some ideas for wet into wet would be things like this. Look at this, where this and this are different colors flowing together. Look at this, nice variation from dark to all these different colors. So this would be typical wet into wet. So we're putting, kind of dropping different colors together and not really trying to brush them together or to control it. This is great for a background. You know, you could do a whole sheet doing wet into wet and drop different colors, let them flow together. Sometimes you might want to pick up your paper and move it around a little bit if things seem to be stuck. But the idea of wet into wet is to be able to still see those different colors. So it's not all blended into a gray. So this has blue and orange and green and peach and brown in the piece. Or like this one, you know, just a lots of different colors, but they're flowing together. So that's called wet into it. So now we're going to go back on this glazing because remember glazing is where we have one color that's dried and then we put different colors on top of it. Or for example here, look at these colors I get with glazing or it's also called overlays. These are colors I could never mix. It has this luminosity because it's letting those underneath colors show through. So for this, this kind of orange color is very soft and very gentle and very subdued. So if I put a really dark color over it, I'm not gonna keep, be able to save this orange color that's underneath. So I'm gonna put some light yellow over this. So now I'm creating a third color. Here's yellow, here's this kind of earthy orange, and now I'm creating a third color. So that's what we want glazing to look like, where we can see that third color. So now I'm going to